We were talking about business continuity and disaster recovery and backups and restores. Let's take a look at some of the regulations that um, are involved with disaster recovery. You are not expected to memorize these, but you should know that they exist. Sources for business continuity or disaster recovery, we've got Business Continuity Institute, we've got the U.S. National Fire Protection Agency, we've got now a, uh, a regulation here, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, we've got Control Objectives for IT, COBIT, we've got um, the Disaster Recovery Institute International, DRII, and the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Association, FEMA. So these are agencies or regulations where we, that we can turn to for disaster recovery and business continuity information and guidance. As we are trying to figure out how to recover, one thing we can do is something called a business impact analysis, a BIA. And with the business impact analysis, we're trying to separate the organizational functions, are they critical or are they non-critical? Obviously, in a disaster, we're trying to get the critical functions back online. And those things you want to get on like in, in a couple of hours. And then you'll have the slightly less critical things need to get back online in 24 hours, and then 72 hours, then a week, then two weeks, then a month. And so we have these sort of levels of criticality in our business impact analysis. How critical is this function? so that we can give it priority in disaster recovery. We've also got a concept called recovery point objective, RPO, and recovery time objective, RTO. The recovery point objective is how much do we need to recover? Where do we need to get ourselves back to? And, and this is, of course, we'll do it in stages. So the recovery point objective immediately is to get this database and that functionality and whatever online. The recovery time objective is how soon do we have to get it done? In a half hour, in four hours, in 72 hours, whatever. So you have this point of recovery and how long we give ourselves to get it done. And then we're to the next less critical stage. Again, another RPO and another RTO. And so we, we do our recovery in stages like this. As we're developing the BCP and the DRP, we need to make sure, as an IS auditor, that we understand the key business processes. Now, if you're an IT person, go ask the department people themselves, what do you need to get back online? You'll be surprised. They might need um, post-it notepads and pencils just as much as access to a database. Ask them how they do their their day-to-day -day operations. Um, don't leave it up just to IT to determine what people need to have. Ask them in the departments. If we had to walk away tomorrow, what, what do I need to give you to start functioning immediately? So you need to understand their process so that you know what's important to them. And you need to understand all of the resources that you have uh, as an IS team. And we need to establish what's critical. That's where you'll ask management. What's critical? Um, what's the criticality of the information? You need to determine what is the business impact if we lose this or lose that. If we don't have access to um, some facilities, maybe it's not as important as we don't have access to this or that service. Prioritize then um, uh, all of your information systems that are, support the different business processes. Figure out what are the strategies for supporting these things. Have your DRP, your disaster recovery plan, have a plan that um, allows the business functions to operate so that the, the IT DRP supports the business BCP. Test the plans and you have to periodically review the plans and you have to train people on these plans. So how do we test something? Well, there are several ways of testing your plans. First is a structured walkthrough. This is where you just get department heads together and you just go through and say, okay folks, in a disaster we're going to do this, 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 this. So it's, it's just on the tabletop, here's what we're going to do. And we'll have maybe a checklist, okay, here's the checklist we go through. That's fine, but that's only just to orient the managers. When there's a real disaster, disaster nobody's going to know what to do. You actually need to train people. And it needs to be simple. And you have to have contingencies, because realize, in a disaster, people are cut off, they can't fly back, they can't drive in, 
they're tending their families, they're missing in action, whatever, you have to account for not only the missing data, the missing equipment, the missing systems, but missing personnel. So how are you going to function with half your staff unavailable or three quarters of your staff unavailable, what you're going to do? So it's not enough just to do a structured walkthrough. That's just a start. But some folks just do that. You can also do a simulation, which is a good practice for your staff and for the, the people who are working. You can do the simulation. Of course, simulation is never as hairy as the real thing. You could do a parallel system if you can afford it, have people practicing like in a, a, a mock-up and disrupt the parallel system and have people practice. That's even closer. Of course, that takes time and energy and money. And you could do a full interrupt where you absolutely like cut off and cut over. You, you fully interrupt right in the middle of production. The, um, the largest enterprises and the ones that are most serious about protecting their data and their functionality and their processes will periodically do full interrupts because it will actually show up weaknesses nobody ever expected. So these are all possible testing methods. The business has to determine what's appropriate for it. You as the IS auditor have to see, okay, what is your testing method and have you done it? And what were the results of the testing method? There's always something to be learned and improved upon from the testing method. In some cases, you just leave it up to insurance to cover certain things. You know, you, we, we, can't, we can't deal with it. We'll just, we'll have insurance. And we can have insurance for equipment, software, hardware, reconstruction, whatever expenses, uh, business loss and interruption, documents and records, um, errors, um, uh, transportation in the media, um, making sure that uh, everything is um, still uh, valid and has integrity. So you can, you can have insurance for all kinds of things that you just decide that you can't truly protect. Now, if you're in the middle of a disaster and you have to pick up and go, or like people drive into work and the place is taped off and we can't go in there, wh what do we do now? You have to have a, um, a, a communications plan in place and a place for people to go and work and a, a place for people to assemble. So um, one thing I did with one organization is we had a phone tree, basically. And we had all communication go through a phone tree. And so there was a clear way. One person called two people or five people. And they called people in their department who called their coworkers. And so we kind of distributed the dissemination of the information. But, but it clearly went to a single point. Sometimes you have to go to an alternate site. And again, it's how much money do people want to spend and how critical is this? A hot site is completely set up, everything completely redundant. You just pick up and go, and you fail over your system to it. You know, it's, it's like completely set to go, totally mirrored with the same or all, nearly the same functionality and capability. A warm site is almost this. You've got infrastructure in place. Uh, you just have to basically pick up the data and the people and maybe some equipment, and you go. Uh, a cold site is basically four bare walls, electricity, and carpet, and you have to actually go and completely set it up. Or you can have a reciprocal agreement, like newspapers do it, where we can't work in our facilities, so can we come and use your printing presses to print off our additions? And, um, of course, with the reciprocal agreement, the difficulty is do they have the capacity to handle as much as you need, and also what kind of contention will there be between your staff and their staff? But these are all options for alternate sites. So when we are evaluating the BCP and the DRP, we're looking at the business continuity. Are they prepared to keep the business running? And how will they manage an alternate site if they have one? Have they tested their policies? What is their recovery plan? Uh, are they backing up okay? Have they tested it? Are they following all backup procedures? Um, is, do they have recovery plans for, for everything, systems and equipment and software and, and data? And we want to make sure that the plan covers all types of disasters. And anything that's residual, of course, we can always um, buy insurance for. And the disasters are not just for data, but they're for systems, they're for functionality, they're for processes, they're for personnel. 
So these are all of the things that the IS auditor wants to know that the business has in place. And that is the end 